So it's for okay. last year. Would be. I'd like to call to order the February 1st, 2022 uh, council meeting. Um, can I have a moment of silence and have a pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Secretary, can I have a roll call, please? Hakeem Jones. Rebecca Smith. Here. Rashad Bates. Here. Dustin Queenan. Here. Tiffany Henley. Here. Heather Lewis. Here. Thomas LaPera. Here. Can I have a motion to approve the previous minutes? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Motion passes. Uh, we did not have an executive session tonight. Uh, Madam Vice President, announcements? Um, I don't have any announcements, but I do have an announcement <laughs> as a council person. Sure. <laughs> So the reuniting family bail fund, um, along with Von C, uh, Photo 360 by Tiffany, Flavus Cuisine is having its first annual uh, Valentine's Day fundraiser called Love Bonds. Um, it will be held at Von C Brewing Company on Monday, Valentine's Day. So anyone's interested in tickets, you can reach out to uh, me at Heather at bailfundmonco.org or go to our website, www.bailfundmonco.org. Council, anyone else have any announcements? Mr. Jones, did uh, Mr. Bill Ryan have a an event planned or something for employment? He, yes, he, uh, and I didn't bring it with me. I did send it out, and I think Kevin has put it out on our, our media about um, Einstein having a, having a job okay. fair, yeah. and uh, it's it's on our it's on our website for everything. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. see uh, our person in charge over there, Kevin. Uh, Madam Secretary, any public comments? Yes, Perry Thompson or Percy Thompson. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, um, how you doing, Thompson and um, Michael, my uh, announcement is about what I've been talking about for at least the last two years about parking on, on West uh, Poplar Street, the 300 block. It's uh, street cleaning day on both sides of the street at the same day in the same time frame. Uh, it still hasn't been changed. It hasn't been nothing. Uh, when, when we get out of work, there's no parking spaces there. They suggest I park on Astor Street. There's no parking space on Astor Street or Sweet Street. So you park on um, on Poplar Street. You wake up in the morning. You get a ticket. You know, one o'clock in the morning. You know, when I'm get up in the morning, just keep moving my car every, every week and stuff. Uh, last question, I did, well, if you don't clean the street, why move the car? The streets ain't being cleaned. That's another question. And, uh, well, just in case something happens, well, suppose something happens on Saturday, it's supposed to happen on Sunday, when, when the town street's not working, we're, we're, we're supposed to move the cars then? I don't know. I just need to um, address that both sides of the street is the same day and the same time frame when it should be one, and when everybody else got a day, a day here and a day here, or a different time here, or a different time here. That's all I'm asking for. I'm getting tired of seeing these tickets on the card. That's all I'm just saying. And Thanks, sir. you sign up and nobody contacts me to let me know what's going on either. I have talked to a colonel's office. I talked to Brother Thomas up in the Public Works. I even emailed Kevin. I haven't heard nothing from nobody yet about the situation. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. Thanks, sir. I'll make sure that somebody reaches out to you. I appreciate it. And we have one, uh, Jim Waters from Hamilton Street. There are several modifications for stormwater control that will stop the flooding of Whitehall Road, damage to the bridge over Stony Creek, and property damage to Stony Brook condos, and reducing the damage to the zoo and Elmwood Park. Uh, expand the stream buffer, a stormwater basin. A stormwater basin at Burnside Avenue and Eagle Drive would be the first defense against East Norton uncontrolled stormwater. The combination of the Farm Park Master Plan in 1992 and stormwater control on the Norristown High School grounds would keep the state roads open to Einstein Hospital. That's it. Uh, anybody else in the audience would like to make public comment? Yeah, I'd like to follow up on that. Please state your name and address. Yeah, Dominic Jafrida, uh, 1419 Boyer Boulevard. 
Can I take this mask off for a minute? Sure. Sure. Great. Um, I come before you all tonight, and uh, it's a pleasure to meet those of you who I've not had the pleasure of meeting out in town as a, a citizen of Norristown, uh, a scholar, and uh, a community member that's concerned about what we're doing here in our city. Um, I run a homeless shelter out here with a few other people in the town called Norristown Safe House. I also study renewable, sustainable energy technologies. I'm a good friend of Jim Waters, and I've actually watched closely with him as how he has uh, seen the degradation of our uh, waterways and our local communities. And I just want to come before you guys and humbly ask you to just give me a few minutes to explain a few things, kind of the, the so I, I would call it a state of the union, except this is the state of our township and our city. So Norristown, uh, there's a public record, ewg.org slash tap water. Uh, our tap water is severely toxic and polluted. This is tested by scientists who are not lied under the control of a water treatment plant or a company or a sewage company. These are free thinkers, free scholars who publish these results. Um, our water is exceeding the health guidelines in numerous categories. I believe there's about uh, over 10 contaminants known in our water that are ca uh, causes of cancer, growth defects. Uh, as you know, we have uh, the state hospital located in Norristown. And I think uh, over the years, that's something that has weighed in on our community is the, the quality of our tap water here alone. This isn't something that's unique to Norristown itself. It is a, a countrywide issue. If you recall Flint, Michigan riots a little while ago, they were actually <laughs> protesting about their water quality and they were sort of washed away with some other news and media that came out. And today we have some other issues such as COVID that's sort of washing out the big push for green sustainability right now. Um, there is technology that exists, and I happen to be an expert in it. I work with people all around the world, and I don't say that to brag. I say that to just offer my services to this town and our city. Uh, technologies that exist that you could take wastewater, a sewage water, uh, river water, uh, through the process of filtration and uh, elect electrolysis. You're, it's the splitting of a water molecule. You can create energy and clean water at the same time. Uh, this isn't a new fad. This is something that's been around for over 60 years. It's used in outer space. It's used in submarines by our military. The Navy uses it in deployment and military around the world. A lot of it is classified confidential information, but there are free patents to the world that are available for anyone to pick up uh, and duplicate these technologies and processes in their own home, in their own city, their own state. Uh, right now, I'm working with the state of Connecticut. Uh, they are deploying an entire program to upgrade their infrastructure. And by that, I mean they're upgrading from carbon pollution models to net zero carbon or carbon negative processes, processes that actually create clean water and clean oxygen for every person in their community, as well as electricity and power to boot. Um, another big point I wanna come back across with what Jim Waters has been doing for now, I think 40 years almost, uh, <laughs> the sewage treatment plants that we have here in Norristown and our, our river quality. The water was toxic, I believe, about seven years ago. It may still be toxic. I haven't even looked at the recent uh, reports on it. Dominic, thank, thank you. Three minutes. Oh, thank very you. good. Appreciate your problem. Yep, yeah, sure. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Good evening, guys. My name is Rocco Romanillo, for uh, Corner Street in Arsam. I think all you guys know who I am. Uh, some neighbors that moved in about a couple months ago, they run a landscape business up at a corner house, and they got about four or five trucks parked, they take all kind of parking space. Okay? That's on the 850 cone at Beach. Okay, and if you guys want to look into it, and they park whatever it is, I'm the chief. Uh, plus all my neighbors, by the, land, uh, by the court enforcement, look like nobody's doing nothing about it. One of them's got a stanchion court all over uh, the yard in front. When rain, snow, they got a stanchion court just like this on the floor. With a light, with a Christmas lights, they still li uh, light it up. At the back of the yard, there's still a mess. And they told me they're going to send them a letter. I didn't hear nothing about it. Okay? So... If I can hear some of you guys, same thing the other neighbor, the one with the roof. 
Uh, the court force said they couldn't do nothing about it. I gotta, I gotta sue them. I do sue them, but she keep cancel the the court appearance. Now I don't know what I'm gonna do about it. As to, I said it cost me over thousand dollars for fix the, the leak of her roof. Now I'm still getting moisture in, and she won't do nothing about it. And this is 846. Come. And the other one is 842. Thanks. So you guys do whatever you can. I've been living there for 50 years. I never had so much problem. And now they got dogs in the, on the street. They go poop right in front of my gas meter. The, the people take them and let them poop right there. You guys are going to do anything about it with these guys? There's a lady across the street. She's a cat lady. She, got, she feed about 20 cats around the neighborhood. The other day when it was cold, I started my truck, two cats come out under my hood. Oh, well, anything you guys are going to do about anything about it? Maybe I can get a Dinucci for the shoot them. <laughs> I know Donald, uh, Mr. O'Connell, don't do nothing about that. <laughs> okay, Thanks, sir. it's all. My name is Rocky. We do all the repair work for you. Any guys. other public comment? Can you push? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to appointments. Administration of yeah. Oakland. Yeah. Oh, one more? Can I go again for three minutes and finish this up? <laughs> no. <laughs> one. Okay. Uh, we'll move into appointments. Administration of Oath of Office for Entry Level Police Officer Justin Bessard. Is that you, Chief? Or? Yeah. Oh, right. Did you vote? No, no. Sorry about that, Mr. President. Oh, Chief, the uh, fire. Austin Bassard, are you ready to take the oath of office? Sir. Great. If you could raise your right hand and place your left hand on the Bible and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Justin Bassard. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend. That I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The Constitution of, of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The Charter of the Municipality of Norristown. The Charter of the Municipality of Norristown. And that I will enforce the laws of this Commonwealth. And that I will enforce the laws of this Commonwealth. And the ordinances of Norristown. And the ordinances of Norristown. And that I will discharge the duties of my office. And that I will discharge the duties of my office. As a police officer for the municipality of Norristown. As a police officer for the municipality of Norristown. With honor and fidelity. With honor and fidelity. I do further swear. I do further swear. That I will uphold, obey, and enforce. That, I'll, that I will uphold, obey, and enforce. The law. The law. Without consideration to a person's race. The law without consideration to a person's race. Color. Color. Sex. Sex, religious creed, religious creed, sexual orientation, sexual orientation, age, age, national origin, national origin, ancestry, ancestry, handicap, handicap, or disability, or disability. Congratulations, officer. Thank you.
Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move into fire rescue engine purchase. Chief O'Donnell. Thank you, Mr. President. Municipal Council, before you tonight is Resolution 2205. Uh, it's an ask of the fire department to purchase a uh, rescue engine uh, for the Norristown Fire Department. Uh, the, currently, the average age of our fire apparatus in the fire department are over 20 years old. Uh, this new addition, if approved tonight, um, would be uh, greatly appreciated and needed by the community. Some highlights um, about this truck. Uh, first, it's a low bid and most responsible bidder. Uh, if approved tonight, uh, the build time would be about 18 months, so we won't see this truck, nor will we have to spend any money until 23, 2023. Uh, if ordered before tomorrow, uh, we have a savings of $55,500. Um, if approved later than February 2nd, the cost will go to $793,000. So the uh, uh, purchase amount right now is $737,500. And that money is being allocated through ARPA uh, to help fund this apparatus. Thank you. Thank you. Council, any questions? Seeing none, can I have a motion to approve the purchase of rescue engines for Norristown Fire Department? So moved. Second. Second. Madam Secretary. Hakeem Jones? Aye. Rebecca Smith? Aye. Rashad Bates? Aye. Dustin Queenan? Aye. Tiffany Handley? Aye. Heather Lewis? Aye. Thomas LaPera? Aye. The ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move into police resolution number 22-02. Destruction, destruction of 12, 2001 arrest records. The Norris Police Department is requesting counsel to approve disposal of the following records. The Norris Police Department court case files are dealt to juvenile disposition sheets and also the court case files juvenile. Counsel, do I have any questions? One question. So um, when, you, when you say destruction, is this destruction of the papers or other digital files too? This paper. Do they, okay, paper. do you keep digital files of those, or they all just get well, these, these are um, very old records, or are all paper. Okay, thank you. Council, any other questions? I have a question. Council Jones? Um, Mr. Crandall, um, mm -hmm. are you familiar with townships that do turn old records into digital files? Yeah, it's a project. We're actually working on convert our records to, mm -hmm. to digital files, but in the instance of, of uh, state, like this state, our, our states have a dis record dis destruction policy uh, because there's an, there's an understanding, one, that the cost of converting digital is very, very expensive. And that's why they set deadlines for the records. And to be honest, in a lot of cases, it works to the advantage not to try to retain all of those records because at some, at some point in time, uh, it, it just becomes too much of uh, too much of a challenge to maintain them, and so we're, right now I think our digital project conversion project we're talking about a hundred thousand dollars just for phase one this year to to get records converted and then move forward. Moving forward, we'll just uh, continue to scan. Council, any other questions? Councilwoman Smith. Um, how often would you even get a request for 20-year-old arrest records? Not very often. And, and, and this, you know, each, each, uh, each area of discipline has different time, timelines for when you can destroy. And so it's, it, it varies in terms of the types of records and the status set, uh, what that is. But we don't, we don't, not that I'm aware of, we don't get that request. I mean, I think a lot of times you get very old property record requests, but not, not so much these. And if a court case comes up, say, from 20 years ago, uh, or some information comes up from 20 years ago, honestly, uh, particularly if you, if you can't digitize them, it's, it's probably best to say, yeah, according to the record, 
<laughs> we destroyed them so that you don't spend a whole lot of time uh, trying to trying to dig it up if you don't have it in a really really organized basis. Council, any other questions? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve resolution number 22-02? So moved. Second. Madam Secretary. Hakeem Jones. Aye. Rebecca Smith. Aye. Rashad Bates. Aye. Dustin Queenan. Aye. Tiffany Henley. Aye. Heather Lewis. Aye. Thomas LaPera. Aye. The ayes have it. Motion passes. Mr. Jones, resolution number 2206. Council approved resolution 2206 ratifying the memorandum of agreement between the municipality and the laborers local union 57. Thank you, Mr. President. Council, this has been a process of a long time coming. The last labor agreement expired uh, December of, uh, of 2019. And for various reasons, we've been in, in stages of negotiation, as you uh, might recall. The union for the laborers at, at, in 2019 was the local 135. Uh, that's since been disbanded, at least for our, or our laborers, and the local 57 picked them up. And so that was probably about almost a year of time between the two, getting one going out and the other one coming in, and then, of course, the laborers organizing themselves to the point that they knew that they wanted uh, 57 to be their union. So we've gone, uh, gone through that uh, process, uh, waiting for them to get organized for, for, for uh, most of that time. Uh, but we have, uh, we have been negotiating uh, faithfully and finally came to a resolution. Um, and there were not really any major changes as a result of this negotiation, but I, I highlight and I share with you the detailed list really of all of the changes that were in it. I highlight some of the more important ones because most of them were kind of administrative in nature. Uh, so, such as changing all of the references to, from 135 to, to, to 57. Other things was adding June 19th, uh, Juneteenth as a, as a holiday, as council had approved that, that uh, holiday. I also included uh, continuing pension payments that had already been set up uh, through the local uh, 57. Uh, we wanted to add language that, that provided uh, seniority within a job classification uh, would be prevailing so that if, if there was some reason for a RIF or reduction in force that uh, you wouldn't, uh, a person that say not a heavy equipment operator that had seniority would not be able to bump a heavy equipment operator so that we don't lose the skill set and then have to keep somebody uh, that really couldn't operate heavy equipment. So we kept, we, we negotiated that successfully. Uh, we had the hourly wages were uh, 225, uh, increased about 2.25% in for 2020 and 2021 uh, and, and also uh, 2022 there would be a 2.5% 2, 2 uh, percent increase retroactive to January and a 2.5% increase January 2023. Now in lieu of, of, of um, us going back to try to recalculate all of the overtime other payments that might have been due and if we've done this because we went through a similar process with the last uh, contract we agreed uh, with the labor union to give uh, lump sum payments uh, to the staff to uh, to make up for anything that they missed as we were going through uh, that time period of uh, uh, $2,250 per, per, uh, per uh, staff member uh, in the union and that will be payable within 30 days of your approval of, of, this, uh, of this agreement. And we added also because of the need and uh, the growing need for folks to have CDLs and, and most uh, municipalities are converting all of their staff to CDL requirements that in, uh, we had a language that any person hired after August uh, 1st, 2021 must obtain a CDL uh, Class A license within the first uh, 90 days of their prob probationary period. So those were the, the must, I mean the, the, the bigger items in, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, agreement. Uh, certainly, as we looked at it with finance and, and, and uh, our labor attorney, all, all the terms are, are in order. And uh, we're recommending the council approve us to uh, sign this uh, agreement. Uh, council, any questions? 
I have one. Did the members uh, vote on this? They already approved it. Okay. Yes. With no questions, uh, do I have a motion to approve re resolution 2206? So moved. Second. Madam Secretary. Hakeem Jones. Aye. Rebecca Smith. Aye. Rashad Bates. Aye. Dustin Queenan. Aye. Tiffany Henley. Aye. Heather Lewis. Aye. Thomas LaPera. Aye. You guys have it. Motion passes. Uh, Building and Codes Enforcement, Historical Architectural Review Board, January 2022. Mr. Singh. Thank you, Mr. President. Council, before you is a request to approve or deny the Historical Architectural Review Board applications that were received, reviewed, and recommended by HARP for January 2021. The two applications that we received were for 826 West Main Street and 922 West Main Street, both of which were recommended by the HARP Board uh, for approval and the issuance of a COA. Thank you, Council. Council, any questions? No questions. Are they, are they the same owner? And um, I guess what are the intent? Uh, that is a great question, uh, Councilman. Uh, 826 is owned by, uh, 826 and 922 are owned by two different property owners. Okay. Yes, sir. And they're looking to enhance the properties? And yes, yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Council, any other questions? Is there, uh, like, once they receive these funds, is there, like, uh, any limit on, for example, if they get the funds, can they sell the property, like, next year? So these, these aren't um, to uh, approve any funds, but these are for actually getting approval from HARB and Council right. to make the necessary repairs and the renovations to the exterior of the building mm -hmm. in accordance with our HARB ordinance. So any property that's located in HARB, they would have to get approval from council first before making any type of repairs or renovations. So they will uh, go in front of HARB to pretty much uh, show us what type of materials they plan on using and the type of repairs. Right. And as long as those requirements are, or as long as those repairs and renovations are within the ordinance, then the HARB board will approve them and then we would be able to bring them before you. Okay. So basically, Harp is just uh, to keep the, like, the integrity of the community so that you don't just knock, you know, everything down and modernize. Yeah, it looks, like, what you do. Yeah, it looks like the community. Okay. Uh, Council, any other questions? Seeing none, can I have a motion to approve the Harp January 20th? Second. Madam Secretary. Hakeem Jones. Aye. Rebecca Smith. Aye. Rashad Bates. Aye. Dustin Queenan. Aye. Tiffany Henley. Aye. Heather Lewis. Aye. Thomas LaPera. Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Um, this is Monsanye, 2015 and 2021 CDBG budget substantial amendment. Thank you, Council President. This is a little convoluted and bear with me if I try to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> if these regulations make any sense, but. Uh, what I want to assure council is that you, you'll be made all. So I'm going to go through this process, but we'll be fine. <laughs> so um, the 2015 budget line item for administration went over slightly by about 2.6%. We did a project that is, uh, we did a five-year consolidated plan and we built it towards that line item. But it took us above the 20% cap that Congress has on on what you can use for administration in any given year. Um, so if this, the $20,133 was a little less, if it was 19000 we had just used, all we would have had to do is literally just change the budget line item uh, physically and would be done. But if you hit the $20,000, you hit what you call a substantial change, um, basically uh, boundary. When you hit that, you're supposed to then go through what we call a public participation process. That is, the public is supposed to be advised that what we're, changes we're making in terms of the budgets. That means that we have to advertise it in the paper for 30 days, and if anyone has any comments, they would have to comment uh, within the 30 days, and then we would have to send that information to HUD if there's an objection to that nature. But in this case, uh, because we did go above and they're saying, okay, you need to send back this money, and then we'll send it back to you. But it, it just needs to go through our system, because you cannot use federal money to pay back federal money. You have to use 
<laughs> general fund money to pay them back, then they send it back through the federal system, but you'll be made whole. So that's all we're saying with all this convoluted <laughs> way of trying to explain, but you'll be made whole, everything is fine. And we can, I just need your authorization to advertise it so that we meet the public participation process. Council, any questions? Um, I have one. Madam Vice President. And, and it's really just the, can you explain like the 2015 date, like it took them that long yes. to, for this all to <laughs> yes. process? So sometimes that happens. Okay. <laughs> And I'm glad you brought that up. The irony of it is that some regulations actually came in in 2009, and now they're starting to be effective. So there's a lag as well. Okay. So that's, it just happened. But they, they made me make sure I reassured you you'd be made whole. Thank you. Yeah. Council, any other questions? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the 2015 and 2021 CDBG budget amendment? So moved. Second. Madam Secretary. Hakeem Jones. Aye. Rebecca Smith. Aye. Rashad Bates. Aye. Dustin Queenan. Aye. Tiffany Henley. Aye. Heather Lewis. Aye. Thomas LaPera. Aye. The ayes have it. Motion paid. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, departmental reports, uh, Mr. Jones. Yes, and I'll say I don't, I don't think uh, Mr. Ojenabo will make it. He, he's going to try to. Uh, he is uh, preparing to take a well-deserved vacation in Nigeria, so he is uh, going through the process of trying to get vaccinated and all of that stuff to get over there. So he, he probably, he probably won't make it. I ask you to excuse him tonight. So I wanted to give council an update really on four major projects uh, that, that we're working on uh, so that you'll, you'll uh, know what's going on. First one uh, is to give you an update on uh, what's happening with Municipal Hall. Uh, so construction right now between both materials, equipment, et cetera, the project is about 40% complete. Um, what we're looking at now is uh, conservatively uh, a, a move-in date back into City Hall of January 2023. It might be December, but I'm going to say January 2023. Um, as with most projects like this, uh, you have some un undiscovered uh, discovered, uh, problems that you didn't know you had. When we were doing um, some work on the ground floor, uh, demolition work on the ground floor, it was discovered that uh, there were problems with the sanitary sewer line under the building, and uh, it had been actually crushed, and, and it was sagging uh, significantly due to poor soil conditions. So we had to resolve that, which uh, not only added a little time, but added a little, little expense uh, to the project as well. So in, in next month's meeting, I believe it will, you'll see a change order related to that and, and uh, some, uh, some um, plumbing issues that had to be dealt with as a, as a, as a result of that. Um, the biggest delays that we have had and continue to have are related to the availability of materials, as it is everywhere. Uh, so while we have most of the key equipment on site, there are some items that can have come, uh, a lot of items came later than expected and then some are, are still uh, in route to us. Um, we, the permanent electric power for the building, the new permanent electric power, uh, has been established. And we're in the process of transitioning the emergency power system from the old generator to the new generator that we purchased uh, early on uh, so that all the switch gear can be energized uh, for, the, for the new building. Uh, we've also uh, connected water, new water uh, source to the street. The meter pit is set, and we're currently right now bringing the line, the water line, into the building, the new water line into the building. Um, so that's really where we are right now. Things are, things are going well. They have the building, and, and one of the uh, good news is also that the, uh, the ground floor will be housing the police uh, much earlier than that Janu January date. One of the things that's happening in terms of material delays 
are the um, are the fittings and finish materials like door handles and all of that stuff that that's that's kind of delayed so they'll have uh, some temporary uh, door handles and finished materials in until they come uh, till that comes in uh, we're anticipating again that what what they're telling us is those materials might not fully be there until May of uh, 2023 but we will substantially be operating within the building uh, so that's that's where we are with with that Second project I wanted to give you uh, some information on state hospital project. Uh, as you uh, know, uh, we have been meeting uh, with the staff and I have been meeting and our municipal engineer and, and attorney have been meeting with the state hospital uh, folks um, on a biweekly basis for, uh, for the last several months, and as well as a separate meeting uh, on a biweekly basis with the county <laughs> about their uh, transition away from the uh, homeless shelter as well. So both of those meetings, sets, sets of meetings are going fine. Uh, you know, all of, the, um, all of the tenants were on January 3rd uh, issued uh, termination of lease letters, including the county, so everybody knows that they have to get out. There are a couple of, uh, not the county, but a couple of agencies that are, you know, hemming and hawing about it and wanting to have some conversation. But I assure you, uh, Representative Bradford's uh, team, uh, Senator uh, Capoletti's team, and I have been singing on the same page that council is not even interested in having that conversation, and so we, we're not meeting. As a matter of fact, I think last meeting got canceled because that agency was trying to bring it and Secretary T Topper stopped it. Uh, so uh, if, if there's any problem with that, you know, we, we're saving you guys for the big guns if, if we need to bring you in, but I'm, I constantly, you don't want to hear from council. <laughs> you, you, you really want to get this done. And I think it's, it's moving. Uh, we're, we're just not letting ourselves be put in the position of, um, you know, poor planning or anything like that, that's, that's their responsibility. Uh, the redevelopment area plan uh, for, the, for the conveyed property uh, has been completed. I think Jane and, and her team for working with RDA and the solicitor's office, solicitor's office uh, to get that done. Uh, construction contracts for the demolition are expected to be signed by February 11th, uh, uh, and and uh, so and that seems to be moving. We track that in our weekly biweekly discussion. Uh, activities uh, after the signing are expected to begin February 25th uh, as well. Um, we're looking also in February to have the deed of conveyance and the agreement of sale uh, completed. You you voted on and, and approved the terms. Uh, of, of that agreement as they were, uh, as they were outlined, but we, we're trying to get across the finish line and, and our target on, on both sides of this is to get those uh, done uh, in February. And then uh, finally, construction <coughs> is scheduled to be complete uh, after our conveyance, but construction is, is uh, scheduled to be completed February 2023, 20 and then site stabilization is supposed to be completed by May of 2023 and will be free, free and clear. Um, we're working now, uh, Jane and I, with the RDA uh, putting the finishing touches on, um, on, on an RFP to, uh, to be issued. So hopefully we will uh, be ready before this month is out to get that RFP in front of you guys for a look over before we, before we put it out. Um, so that's where we are with that. Sewer system uh, evaluation. So, uh, as you know, the you all approved uh, the funds to conduct a comprehensive evaluation of the sewer system as a part of your infrastructure focus with the use of uh, American Rescue Plan Act funds. We sent the um, the proposal that the uh, municipal engineer had drafted the scope of work over to the um, to the sewer authority for for them to look over and 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 for them to uh, 
you know, give it a go ahead so that we can have it, the, the proposed. We also set this agreement, intergovernmental agreement, so that will allow us to go into the system and do the work we needed to do to evaluate the system. Um, they have not discussed it yet, and and um, uh, the GM has has asked that uh, both I and the municipal engineer meet with him and his municipal engi his engineer uh, to talk about some aspects of of the of the scope of work. Uh, I've been trying to get that meeting. I think he he was on vacation pretty much all of January, so we're waiting now <coughs> to get that meeting. Crystal is working with them to get that meeting to get it in in uh, in front of so they can get it in front of that board. He said he wanted to have their questions answered before he discussed it with them. Um, and I have a sure. question about that, Crandall. Sure. Um, and I'll, I'll say this, that I, <laughs> I missed it when we talked about it the first time. Mm -hmm. So remind me again how much money we're contributing? We're, contri we're paying for it. Right. And I think it's... Uh, it's a million. No, it's, it's not a million. It's... it's, it's yeah, it, it's, it, it might be like 400000 It's a lot. Plus. But it's a significant Are amount of money. Are they contributing any? No, it is the, the council decided they wanted to fund it so that it wouldn't be passed on right. to uh, users. Okay, so that, that was that portion, not the, um, I know we talked about the runoff water. So that's, okay, so that's not that. This no, is this, this is the sewer system. system. This right. is just for the sewer yeah. system. Yeah. Evaluation. So it's a, it's a it's a significant amount of money. Mm -hmm. It is it is to do a comprehensive assessment uh, so that they can develop a capital program when they develop a capital program, much like we did when uh, we had the municipal engineer several years ago go and evaluate all of the streets in town so that we can develop a road plan and we know the map for what's the worst road and we've been working through that that list. And it's to, it's to give them that. So I'm hoping that we will meet within the next uh, couple of weeks, certainly before the next <coughs> council meeting, I can come back and share with you uh, anything uh, in terms of the, of the movement. But uh, at the end of the day, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. And, and so I know this is after the fact. Mm -hmm. So all the evaluations when we were looking at the sewer authority for the potential sale, None of those reports or anything is valid. Any can you know feed you know support whatever is being done. I'm not sure if this is a duplication. It's it's not a it's not a duplication because the 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 evaluations doing being done for the procurement of the system, uh, which Aqua was looking to do. They they looked at plant and records. Mm -hmm. Basically, they did not do TVing of all of the lines or significant. I mean, separate. they did a general overview of what I mean the cost analysis to get it up to spec. But, but but not really in terms of when you're going to do that. When you, what you're doing is really looking, taking TV and you're TVing the lines of the system. Right. That's the for instance the project that they're doing, the capital project they're doing is really at the plant. But as you know, the, the, the pipes under the ground are, uh, are, are very old. So this will look at the pipes. This will look at what is, what's happening underground in the system uh, and give them the information to then plan. And one of the discussions we had was, well, what's uh, council's expectation? I said, well, council's expectation is that you have a document that allows you to do mas master planning for capital improvements of, of the lines, which our engineer thought, as I shared with you in that first proposal, that there was something like that that existed. And then we were told, he was told, no, it doesn't. We need, they, didn't, they don't have those records that they can share with him. So this is to go and now do that comprehensive thing for uh, them to have, have that tool. And, and then uh, you know, users of the system don't have, to pay for, uh, don't have to pay for that in terms of any rate hikes or anything else to cover it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, I, like I said, hopefully this meeting will happen within the next uh, two weeks and I'll be able to give you an update uh, by the time we meet again or certainly before if something significant happens. And then uh, finally, I uh, want to give you an update in, term, in terms of where we are with the skate park. 
So the municipal engineer and I uh, have, have been meeting I, uh, to discuss the preliminary project schedule. Um, and uh, I should have a draft of the schedule that I'll share with you guys when, I, uh, when we are in your retreat. Um, I've also had lots of going uh, back and forth with uh, Jimmy Gorecki. He's, he's given me uh, the names of some folks who have uh, been designers uh, who designed these parks, a lot of them in, in, uh, in Pennsylvania as well, uh, that he, he's excited about. So I'm reaching out to those folks, and, and, and Jimmy, Cal, and I are going to kind of be the design team, team that talks to these folks uh, and pick, and, and pick a, a design firm to work with us who we will bring an agreement for you to, uh, to bless that we can move forward. We, this schedule is also going to include what the meeting dates are for the uh, skate community meetings that we're going to have. We're looking to get started and, 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 and at the very least, but I, we, you know, I want to have the meeting schedule, but at the very least uh, have the uh, design person on board and at least have had a meeting or so with the uh, outside for, firm. You know, first of March at the latest, hopefully we can get the design firm, firm in front of you by the next meeting. If we can do that, then we'll be ready to actually have a team with us to go out and talk to the skate, uh, skate community. So I'm trying to hope we can do that within the next two weeks, have it in front of you uh, within the next two weeks that we can uh, get, it, get it moving. Uh, again, the uh, process from uh, start to finish construction is typically about four months once we get to a construction thing. So I'm trying to hopefully get it to you so that in the warm months, in the warmer months of the year, <laughs> we'd actually have something for somebody to do. So, uh, those are those are the big projects I wanted to uh, to share with you, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about those or anything else. Council, any questions? Yeah, I got I got a few. Um, <clears throat> you want the four projects? I'm going to start with the first, the municipal hall building. Mm -hmm. um, over the over the course of the months, we've heard some complaints and concerns about loud noise and alarms that are impacting some of the staff. We've heard issues with sometimes breathing and debris, the conditions of the building. I've also heard about the climate and the conditions inside. So I'm just wondering if any of those things have been improved upon. I know our police department and our civilian police, police workers are in there. Right. Are their conditions getting any better? Have any of them relocated? What's the update on that? Yes, they, they've actually all been addressed. We had three Three folks, I think, more than anything, just didn't want to be over there. They, they ended up over in Municipal Hall with, uh, in, in uh, 1700 Markley with us. The, the issue with the noise really wasn't so much about construction noise as it was about alarms going off the, because of the transfer. So we worked, uh, worked uh, that out. And we have an air quality, and it was really those three folks mainly who were doing that. FOP came to me um, early on because I've been constantly in contact with the president of FOP throughout this process. He, uh, president of FOP came to me and said, if you don't hear anything from me, it's not an FOP issue. And, and, but if we heard anything from anybody, both uh, Chief Dillon when he was acting chief and Chief Wood, they respect, respond to that. As soon as we get it, we respond to it. That's why we ended up with, with a few folks moving over. I haven't had anything recent, and Chief, Chief Wood might, might have had anything recent in, in, the, in the last few months where I've had any complaints about air quality. But I get an air quality report, and I, and I haven't had any uh, monthly, and I haven't heard anything else. Weekly, I'm sorry. We do a weekly air quality report, and I haven't heard anything else uh, from anybody over there. Yeah, I, I ask because you're just valid concerns, and whether it's three people or the whole department, I still think the three people should kind of be listened to, and I'm glad you, you said things are being addressed. Yeah, we, d we dealt with those three people's issues, and we absolutely did. The records are moving back to uh, the hall. They're coming back over. The one person who had an issue is no longer employed, so they have no problem coming back. They actually want to come back, so. Thank you. And um, I guess my next question was uh, 
about the sewer system evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, how is the new board? There's a new board of, at, in the authority, two members, and there's obviously someone probably exiting at the end of the year right. that just exited. Mm -hmm. How are those conversations going with the with the the uh, authority? Are, are they part of the discussions? Are they part of the uh, conversation? That's a that's a better question to ask the 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 GM now. My expectation, and I would, was that they were going to have a meeting uh, with the with the authority to talk about it. I was prepared to go to that meeting. Our municipal engineer was prepared to go to that meeting to have and answer any questions that they might have. They just have not. They haven't briefed, uh, set it on their agenda yet to brief the 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 the, uh, the authority board about it, according to Barry. And he wanted to ask whatever questions he had. And, and make whatever comments that he had uh, and his engineer had regarding the scope of work. But we're, we're standing ready to, as soon as we answer those questions, when they present it, we're, we want to be right there to answer any questions that the board will have. Okay. Uh, just one last thing. Sure. Uh, you said you know, Public Works Thomas can't be here, but there's a lot of uh, construction of roads are being dug up. Um, is, is there a timeline on, I think Thomas shared that people did a lot of work Mm -hmm. Is there a timeline on when many of our streets will start getting uh, made whole again? Yeah, there's an, um, as you see, there is an amazing amount of work, and PICO actually has a five-year plan for work. I mean, their grid, as, as you, you know, is not in great shape in Norristown, and, it, and, and they, they have a five-year plan. We actually cut back some of the work because they want it to be tearing up more of the streets. American, PA American Water is, do, uh, is doing as, as well. And, and so we know that when the weather gets warm enough for them to do street restoration, they're going to do it. They're, they're doing temporary things because we made sure that we'd be able to plow over, plow over it for snow. But once the weather gets warm, late March, it's up, you know, they will be then going and making their permanent restoration, both the, them and uh, PA American Water. Thanks. Can I ask a related question? Yeah, I'm done. You're I'm done. done. My questions, <laughs> right. um, related question: mm -hmm. When companies like um, PA American or Aqua, are or or Pico are doing work in town, I know when they dig up the road, we have the rule that they have to repave curb to curb. What happens when they dig up people's sidewalks? Are they also obligated to fix that? Yes. Um, and then again, like because it's the winter months. Um, do they have to do something at least to make Tempor sure that it's walkable? Yes. Okay, I've gotten some complaints about PA water. Again, I can forward to Thomas. Because Absolutely. Of his thing about how they just like left people's sidewalks in piles for the last snow. If, if we, let us know because we, we have fielded some of those okay. and they jump right on it when, okay. when, we, when we, they let us know. And just for the record, I want to let you know that PA water, uh, you know, does curb to curb, They've done a great job of giving us full roads uh, in some instances. Actually, uh, the um, uh, electric Compico, actually, by, by state law, they only have to do, if they don't go past the center line, they don't have to pave curb to curb. And so as, as long as they don't go past, past the center line. So we have, uh, Thomas and I actually have been in, in aggressive negotiations with them uh, about that, and we're getting some concessions where we need uh, need to get some concessions. Uh, they've they've been doing so much work that you know we, we're in the position actually of being able to get additional con uh, inspector uh, to that's, that that work is going to pay uh, going to pay for us so we can keep up. We had some issues with them in terms of some of their contractors because they subcontract out all of their work and so uh, you know we, we kind of had the discussion about you need to watch your contractors uh, a lot in terms of how they long they keep roads closed how they handle people's sidewalks so there's a running list that Thomas keeps it, it very detailed of where problems are so if you've got something to add it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a daily conversation he has with them to keep up with that thank you yes ma'am Council, any Is other there questions? opening for public comment? Questions? No, sir. Public comments at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. Sorry, it's the first time. Council, any other questions? Um, I got one, a couple. Uh, 
the municipal hall project. How are we looking on budget for that? We still have we, we still have not spent uh, nearly all in, near, anywhere near our money. I'll let Kathy speak to that. But we know because of the cost of materials and some change orders that you know we we've had some materials go up by twenty five percent. Sure. And and so as as we look at it, we've been talking about uh, you know how how we pay for it and finance it and what do we need to do in terms of uh, looking at uh, you know restructuring bonds and stuff and Kathy and, and our financial advisors, we met with them uh, a couple of weeks ago. I, uh, I'll let Kathy kind of give you a, look, a little bit more detail, but I walked away from those discussions and Kathy and I meet every week <laughs> to, to talk about it. Um, not highly concerned, I mean, that, that it's going to be problematic that we'll be able to do it. It's, it's just, uh, you know, you know, you know what materials are, are sure. looking like these days. Kathy, if you want. Our $13 million bond, we can call it coming this May. So once we, when we call it, we will get the full amount of whatever we anticipate the new budget will be, which may be $60 million. And again, it's mostly materials and, and the basement stuff for it. So in a, Next month we're going to get together with our financial advisor again when we have a better fixed idea of what, how much money we're going to need and then we'll start planning out the, the new bond issue. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, if I can also, sure. also add, I mean, again, one of, the, one of the things, good news about, you know, it's always not great when prices go up, but one of the, at least one of the good things about this, as you did, with the with the fire truck, that that ARPA money that was spent on that fire truck actually is not any of the new ten million. It's actually from the three million you allocated for us, and so we're we're going to be uh, looking at you know talking to you about what we lost in revenue for 2020, uh, 2021 as well. So I think we're we're not as in a, in any dire straits or anything than being able to get it done. It's just that it will be creative within the uh, conservative boundaries that we get to operate within to get it done. And then if I understood right, the state hospital, once that demolition starts, then we can convey, to finish the conveyance with the RDA, we can put the RFP out while demolition's being done? Yeah, we can, we can put the RFP out. I think the biggest thing we needed to do was get the decoration of, of the area that yeah. we've already gotten. That was, that was the piece we were waiting on to get the area declared as a redevelopment area. So we can put the RFP out while the demolition is going on. And, 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 and so we're not, we're not bound by the demolition at all. Do so with that declaration, does that designate us for TIFs, LERDOs, stuff like that? That, that? The fact that we're going through the RDA, we've got all kinds of opportunities for creative financing to do uh, to be able to do it, so you know, you know, there's there going to be a laundry list of, of things that you can do. Uh, I know that they'll have to look at what qualifies in terms of tests, but I know, yeah. you know, Lerda, et cetera, but you'll be able to do it. You're correct. Uh, declaring an area of blight and then creating a redevelopment plan definitely puts you in a better position in any of those financing mechanisms. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to make you more attractive for that. And even if they're looking at grants or whatever <laughs> else they're looking at. If you say you're a redevelopment area, clearly you, that's your focus, and, and you're not all over the place, and they know this is what you need to do, and it gets priority. Perfect. Council, any other questions? Seeing none, uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? No more. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have. Uh, meeting adjourned. Yeah, they